Welcome to the YouTube channel Bookworm. Today, we will listen to a brief retelling of the following book, The One Minute Manager by Ken Blanchard. Introduction. A certain young man was looking for a good manager to work with and learn from. He to managers from all over the world, but over and over again, he was convinced that there are hard managers whose organizations prosper, but the people working in them suffer, and there are soft managers whose subordinates are happy, but the organizations suffer. Then one day he heard about the one-minute manager and went to his company to talk about his management method. The further narration is built in the form of a conversation between a young man and a one-minute manager and his employees. The main ideas are these. Set one-minute goals. If you ask people in an organization to list their goals and then ask their leaders about those same goals, you likely end up with two completely different lists. This is due to the fact that people do not know well enough what is expected of them. Such management is like playing blindfolded bowling. You never know where the pins are, and you can judge hits only by sound until the boss tells you about the results. The main motivator is feedback. People like to know where, how, and how well they are moving. Therefore, it is important to clearly define in advance what the work of each employee and its quality performance is. To do this, you can use cards on which the employee, after or during a conversation with the manager, writes down the goal and the plan for achieving it in no more than 250 words. Copies of this card remain with the employee and the contractor. Then each of them in one minute will be able to read it and refresh the task in their memory, as well as track the process. Performers are encouraged to reread the cards daily and track their progress towards the goal. The book also uses the 20 80ths rule. In this case, in order to reduce labor costs for such a description of goals, it is proposed to consider that 80% of the most important results are obtained when 20% of the goals are achieved and to focus on these 20%. Let's give one minute praise. Usually managers scold their employees for what they do wrong. This makes it easier for them to show themselves. So the idea of catching employees doing the right thing is interesting enough. The bottom line is that if you scold your employees, then they understand how not to do it, but they do not understand how to do it. And if you praise, then they understand that they are moving in the right direction and are gradually developing. The book gives several examples of the effectiveness of praise for learning. One of them is a dolphin that can jump over a rope stretched in the air. Of course, dolphins do not know how to do this from birth. They are simply rewarded, for example, with a fish for gradual learning. First, for the fact that they will swim over the rope laid out at the bottom of the pool. Then the rope is raised a little, and the dolphin is rewarded only if it swims over the rope and so on until the rope is stretched over the water and the dolphin learns to jump over it. What managers usually do to employees is not only expecting a dolphin to immediately jump over a rope stretched over water, but periodically shocking him for not jumping. Praise is offered as follows. Don't wait for an employee to do all the work perfectly inside and out. Find a well-done piece of work and praise for it. This must be done personally, immediately after the completion of work on the task. First, clearly explain what was done well, how it will help the organization and its employees, then pause to let the employee feel good about you, and then try to encourage him to achieve even more results. At the same time, it is recommended to establish contact with a person, touch, shake hands, etc. It is necessary to praise employees for their work, even if things are not going well in other areas. It is noted that it is not necessary to praise all the time. Over time, employees get used to noticing their achievements themselves and praise themselves. Make one-minute reprimands. Another important part is the one-minute reprimands. But at the same time, it is fundamentally important not to offend the employee's sense of dignity, not to attack his personality, but to criticize his specific act. It is proposed to make reprimands as follows. 
warn the person ahead of time that you are going to be unambiguous about their work. It is important to do it right away and not accumulate emotions. Then the claims seem more fair and understandable. As with praise, scold immediately in person, check the facts, clearly state what exactly does not suit you, maintain visual and slash or tactile contact, and also pause so that the person can feel your words. After that, let the subordinate know that you respect and appreciate him, and the only reason for reprimanding is an unfortunate offense that he could easily have avoided. After that, it is better not to remember the reprimand. When it is completed, it is completed forever. It is important to criticize first and praise later. If you do the opposite, the effect, most likely, will not be achieved. It is also important to let the person feel that there is more concern behind your reprimand than reproach. Of course, one-minute management is more of a metaphor. Sometimes these tasks can take longer, but this metaphor suggests that managing people is not as complex and time-consuming as many people think. In addition to these three main ideas, there are several other valuable thoughts in the book. We will present them separately. One, let people work on their own. Don't try to get into their affairs until they ask for your help. Two, teach employees how to solve problems themselves. By doing this once, you can pass on some of your work to them in the future. 3. Not only the quantity is important, but also the quality of the work. 4. People who feel good achieve good results. 5. Take a few minutes a day to face the people you manage. You must understand that they are your main resources. I would like to note that the described methods are universal and are found in many similar books, for example, in Recommendations for Raising Children, 